Healthcare reform has always been an extremely complicated subject, with piles of regulations, ever-changing reforms, and multiple stakeholders. With the passage of the Affordable Care Act in 2010 coming in just a few pages short of Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, it's a tall task to explain simple flowcharts like this one breaking down whether you're eligible for the new exchanges or expanded Medicaid. <laughs> Easy, right? Let's jump right in by asking the question of who has insurance in Washington, and who doesn't? In the entire state, roughly 1 million Washingtonians, or 14%, have no health insurance, and over 25% of people are underinsured. Of the 14% who are uninsured, almost 50% are between the ages of 18 and 34. So what happens under the Affordable Care Act? The overall goal is to move those who are uninsured and underinsured into the new health benefit exchanges, or to the expanded Medicaid program. Washington State opted to set up its own exchange. They'll have a good choice of plans. They'll be able to check whether their provider, their doctor, is in the health plans network before they sign up. They'll be able to shop by price as well. It's really going to be a great deal for people, especially those who haven't been able to afford insurance in the past. One of the things that the uh, ACA is doing is just raising our consciousness about insurance and what insurance, health insurance costs and what it covers. And that's huge because most of us really don't understand, take the time, don't even feel the need to know all the details of what our health insurance does cover. The thing that I like about the exchange and the Federal Health Care Reform Act um, is that children, and to me they're young adults, up to age 26 get to be on their parents' insurance. Um, where that wasn't before, pre-existing condition clauses are eliminated. Well, there's not enough time to jump into the nitty-gritty details of policymaking. We wanted to ask you and your legislators the values we should consider when writing new health care laws. Values such as equity and fairness, responsibility, and transparency. The exchanges depend upon creating a sustainable insurance risk pool with new and younger enrollees offsetting the higher insurance costs of middle-aged users. Is it fair or equitable for the young to subsidize health care for the middle-aged? If you're a young person, it may seem unfair to you, uh, but for us older folks, um, it, it is uh, improving equity across the board and, and it does improve access to care for the whole. Although the ACA will give most Washingtonians more options for their health care, lower income families will not be eligible for the benefit exchanges and instead will be forced into expanded Medicaid. Should low-income individuals be segregated in their health care coverage? We are segregating people right now horribly by having them have no insurance. And I think Medicaid is a gigantic step forward out of having no insurance into having insurance and being part of the organized system of care. I do look at the Medicaid system as, as segregated and different. Um, I do believe that people, once they get into the Medicaid system, will have everything dictated to them, how they will have their care. The thing that I would like to see um, to create that equity and that fairness is that they have an option to purchase in the exchange. Washington residents now face clear penalties for not buying insurance, which brings up new questions we face under the Affordable Care Act. I think people should have to have health insurance. I do. I think if you have that expectation that you will receive care, you also have an obligation to have insurance. The barrier to them is it's too expensive. And so if we're offering highly subsidized coverage to people, I think people will take it. Many people go without insurance, some of whom can afford it. And then when they go to the emergency room, they uh, expect their expenses to be written off. And that means that all the rest of us are paying for it. There is nothing for free. Whether you're on Medicaid or you're getting a subsidy or you're paying the full bore, Nothing is for free in, in, in the society and, and especially health care. There is far more information regarding the quality and cost of your health care than you might think. Did you know the cost of an MRI can vary from one hospital to another? As a consumer, do you deserve to know more about the cost and quality of your health care? When you expose information, suddenly people feel accountable. And we need to make sure that people understand just what their care costs. When they don't, they don't have any incentive to um, reduce the costs. We really need a consumer reports on just health care. And the Consumers Union actually is working a lot on some of these things, but uh, it's very slow process and, and uh, 
we're trying to, to move things along. Right now, some of the worst outcomes come from the most expensive facilities. So that's what we need to start showing is that where is this cross purpose of poor outcomes and high cost that then people will make different choices in where they go to and or they will demand higher quality from those institutions. And I think as we shine light on outcomes and costs, then I think we're gonna see a lot more change more rapidly. I just think we're all ready for more information and transparency. I think we can take it and I think I've seen people make amazing choices and feel really grounded in it um, when they've got information. Now it's your turn to weigh in on the Affordable Care Act and the values important to you and your family. Take the survey now.